Okay, this is video 5 of the soccer game. Let's go ahead and go back to our main player. Open up the behaviors, double click, run and jump. Uh, let's go ahead and just make some uh, background noise uh, that's constant. So I'm going to go ahead and click once, so every time the game starts, I have that sound effect component sound and I'm going to go ahead and hit play and I'm going to go ahead and loop that I just want to kind of be like you know a soft uh, you know uh, you know just a constant I'm going to upload this is another mp3 that I got from uh, YouTube so this one is sports stadium crowd It's something that has nice background, you know. Uh, I got that from this sports stadium crowd cheering sound effect MP3, a uh, YouTube MP3. Sounds like it's playing. <laughs> uh, and so that's that for that. All right, so now we need to do a reset for our person whenever a goal is scored. So I need a mailbox trigger, just like what we did with the soccer ball. And we need to rename that reset. All right, I need two numbers and a position. So go logic and math, two numbers and a position under properties. Okay, so the reset, again, we're resetting this on the X and Y axis. I'll probably need to uh, uh, redo this, but you originally would uh, just count your squares over. It's kind of a trial and error, so out to get. I'm going to go ahead and type in 28. Again, I'm just going by the numbers on my other game, so I know it's going to be in that area and I can uh, adjust accordingly after we get everything working. Out to X and out to Y. So it'll be on the 28.6 on the X and Y axis. Hit OK. Now we're going to set the behaviors on our two defenders. All right, first you will need a proximity trigger. And you'll need to click that to say ball. So click on soccer ball. Why does that? How it resets it when I let it go. Uh, and the object distance, we want it to cover a big uh, you know, I wanted to be able to run it. So you see how now I have a circle here. So that shows you the circumference of where uh, the players, the computer will attack that ball anywhere inside that. Okay, you make it bigger, smaller, but 600. I just did it to, um, to cover the whole field. Go ahead and switch that to output closest object found, not first, and unclick trigger once, and we should be good with that. Now anything we change to this, we're gonna, it's going to change automatically to the second one since we cloned it. So we don't have to do this twice. Just a quick reminder. All right, so now I need two extractors, a filter. All right, let's see here. Go ahead and go to logic and math. Get your filter. Go to properties and get two extractors. Line them up like that. All right. On my first one, I have X from this object. That's fine. On the second one, I have X. Go ahead and switch that to from other object. And click on soccer ball. Again, I don't know why it does that. soccer ball and then this object 
click on that and it should be the only one listed uh, did I have to change anything up top on that first one no I did not okay and that's at greater than zero that should be fine X to extract X to extract and then in and then whoops in and then value to value all right next I'm going to need two numbers so go to logic and math and get two numbers and this one will be minus six this one will be six and pass to get fail to get now I need a velocity under properties and the top one goes into X the bottom one goes into X as well and now I need a flip all right let's see flip under properties all right, at the six, I'm going to go ahead and move that to back so that they're going to fall the ball and that the character will flip and then out to flip. And let's just make sure everything's looking good on that. Yep. Velocity, that's good. Okay. So next, let's go ahead and do our mailbox. So mailbox trigger. I need two numbers under the logic and math. One, two. Uh, again, I'm, these are going to reset similar places here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do 10 and 2 out to get, out to get. Then I need a position under properties, out to X, out to Y. Again, that's going to move those computer characters back over to that section every time, excuse me, a ball is scored. All right, let's see what else I have to do. Go ahead and give me a collision trigger. Give me an always trigger. I need two numbers under logic and math. The first number, let's go ahead and do minus six. Second number, plus six. Let's see here. Collision any. Let's see what's going on. Any top. That looks good. And now I need a toggle. So a toggle switch under the logic and math. Any to next. Always to in. Out one. Whoops. To get. Out two to get. And I need a velocity but on Y. So let's go ahead and go to properties velocity. Y. Okay, let's see if these actually work. All right. No. So you see him chasing, but it's not resetting, so we need to reset that. Let's go ahead and uh, let me figure out why it's not resetting. Hmm. All right, looking back at my other game, I found out why. All right, we have to make the right and left walls whenever the ball interacts, it will reset. So if you'll click on your uh, one of your walls, just go ahead and click on the right wall and click on behaviors. All right, so now I'm going to need a collision trigger. Go ahead and change that to your ball. Let's 
All right, now we need to send messages. We need to send, we have essentially five things that we're resetting. We have the goalie, we have the player, we have the computers, and then we have the, um, we have the soccer ball. So let's see if we can get this going. So let's go ahead and get message. We we all, we might only need four messages. So let's see how that works out. If you go to components, go ahead and uh, actually no, you will need five. So we're gonna go ahead and do our fifth one because. Even though that these are cloned, they still will have to be uh, have separate messages. So we have the soccer ball. Whenever it hits uh, one of these walls, this wall over here, uh, it'll send a message to reset. So we have to click reset, and then where it says select object, let's go ahead and select our player underneath object. Since there's only one of them, go ahead and just click on whatever is underneath that that says object. So we have that, so we're good here. All right, next let's go ahead and reset the soccer ball. So hit reset and find your ball and click so soccer ball and then click on, there's only one of those. Click send. Again, we have to do the reset again. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the goalie. There's only one of those. Next, we're going to go ahead and do reset. And find and I named them computer. All right, here we go. And you see how there's two of them? So I'm gonna do the first one, object 206. And now I'm gonna do this reset and computer. But then I'm gonna do the second one, object 207. That's why I have five messages. All right, let's see how that looks. All right, can't find my person though, so let's check to see where. Oh, and that didn't go. <laughs> All right, uh, so when it, it it wasn't resetting properly, and I believe I remember if you click on your soccer ball, click edit, and behaviors. Uh, I think there was something I forgot to do in the position section. Don't use pixels, use grid. So switch all those to grid. So click on the player, edit, behaviors, and then go to the position block and use grid. Pixels uh, throw everything off. Sorry about that. Just those seem to go right. So let's see here. Behaviors, position. Now that did pixels, but let's go ahead and switch that to grid. And our goalie. Oh, they're just going up and down. So actually, I guess that one's fine. So let's see how this looks. All right, so that worked out well. That did, did good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and edit this video and Hopefully I only have to make one more.